Okay, welcome to the first main part of this tutorial. Um, in this video we're going to talk briefly about the file structure um, and then we are going to code, well, like quickly explain the index.php file and then code the init.inc.php file. Okay, so file structure. Um, in the root of the um, sort of site, if you like, um, we have this single index.php file. Um, this file is the one that you see when you browse to the site. I've got it open here in my browser. So if I just remove this, you see we get. Um, but what happened before was we got redirected back to um, the default page. That doesn't happen anymore because I've blanked all the code. Um, I'll just quickly open this file. You see we don't have any um, don't have any PHP code in here at all except these tags, which we're going to fill in later. Um, so okay, that's it. Um, this core folder just contains one folder which is pages um, that's the file that contains all of the PHP files that we will be included to make the pages basically I think I briefly showed you before the news page file um, so yeah that is in that folder so we have two pages home page and news page um, I've just gone for this naming convention um, the name of the page dot page dot ink dot ink because it's being included and dot page just because it's a page um, obviously you can name them whatever you like, they don't have to end in .php um, but yeah, it just doesn't really matter, I just went for this because it seemed simple at the time um, and then obviously this init.inc.php file that we've used before okay so now that that is explained let's get on with coding it um, obviously the, oh I should briefly talk about this um, basically all this sort of CSS code here uh, that's what this is, by the way. All this code here just produces this layout, uh, this design, sort of sets the background colours and these corners. Um, so yeah, that's what that's for. Um, this is the navigation menu. You see the two links here are the home and news buttons. Uh, obviously, when you're designing a real site, you'd have it a bit sort of nicer than this, but just for the purposes of purposes of this video, I would say that is more than fine. Um, so yeah, if you click on them, they just still link to the same places. Um, oh, actually, I should probably should mention um, the, the links. Um, so each button is a link, and it links to um, question mark page equals, and then the get variable, the page name, so the name of the file. So what you're linking to here, so home, corresponds to the first part of the file name uh, in the pages folder. Um, and that's how we're going to validate if um, the page is valid or not, which we'll get to later. Okay, so uh, in this, um, the first thing we need to do in this file is include the uh, init init file. So we'll do that just on one line. Use the include function, um, and then just give it the path, which is going to be core slash init dot inc dot php. Um, I do have a basics tutorial on including files um, requiring require once the four functions sort of functions that you can use to include a file um, I said should uh, I should say should because there is another one um, that has the same effect but does something more complicated but we won't talk about that now obviously uh, so yeah go and watch that if you don't know what this does um, but it's fairly simple so hopefully you'll pick up what's going on. So yeah, uh, that's usually what I do if there isn't going to be more code at the top of the page. So say if you were just starting a session, you could replace that with session start. It's perfectly fine to have it on one line like that. Oops. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about it. Um, and on this line, we are going to include something else, which is going to be one of the pages. Um, and which page we include is going to be decided in this init file, which we're going to work on next. So I'm going to open that up. Oh, actually, I should just check, just reload our page to make sure I haven't made any typos, which I haven't. Uh, so the fact that we don't get any errors here, here means that the page is being included. Okay, so uh, the first thing we want to do is check if the get variable is supplied and it isn't empty. Um, we could, for example, do, uh, well, let's just do it. Um, we could, if we could do that using the isSet function uh, page, check that against false. If it is false, I'm going to redirect the user, which we do using the header function and sending the location header. Uh, we want to redirect them to page equals 
home. And we just want to kill the script there because we don't want anything else to happen. Okay, so now what should happen is if I don't supply a get, uh, the page variable, uh, we should be red redirected to the home, and then that is supplied, so this condition won't be true anymore, meaning we won't be redirected again. What can happen if you don't sort of do this wrong, say if you missed out the faults or type true, um, you can get a redirect loop, um, which Firefox, in my case, will warn you about. So um, if I just remove this from the URL and reload it, you see it comes back. The problem is, if I remove just the home, hit enter, you see it accepts an empty get variable. It also accepts it without that equal sign, like so. Uh, so we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do instead of using is set is use the empty function. Uh, what the empty function will do, um, empty function will do uh, is sort of check the variable. At first, it'll check if it's set. If it's not set, it'll return false. Um, then it'll check if it's a empty string. If it is an empty string, it'll return false. It'll return false if it's a null byte, and I think it'll return false if it's zero. Maybe not. I'm not sure. You should check that. PHP.net has all the answers. Uh, so yep, that's what we're going to do. So now if I just uh, go back to our browser and hit reload, you see the equals home comes back. If I supply an empty string, you see we get, we get redirected back to here again. So that's how we're going to make sure that they are supplying a get variable. Um, the next thing we want to do is um, get an array of the pages that are available to us. So we're going to do that using the um, scan dir scan dir function. What that does is returns an array of all of the files in um, in a folder, basically, including folders. Doesn't sort of identify end up, eh, doesn't identify between files and folders. Um, so that's something you have to do yourself if you need to. In this case, we won't because we know exactly what's in that folder and it's just files. Uh, so what we're going to do is first just define. Uh, okay, well, yeah, let's talk. Let's do it like this. If we uh, if just define this uh, pages uh, variable and make that equal to scan dir, and then in here we're going to have the path to the folder which we want to scan. And if you remember from our folder structure, let's go up. Uh, we want to work, we're working in this file at the moment. It's being included by the index page. Um, and we want to um, scan this folder in the same folder as the file. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so what we really need to do is get the full system path to this core folder that we have open here. Um, the reason for this is, say if you have a uh, same well, what you could do is scan dir core slash pages, um, which isn't ideal because say if you had like another folder or something um, that you're including this init file from, it would sort of break the system because the uh, path to the pages folder would be wrong. So what we're going to do is make use of the file constant, which uh, I will just demonstrate by killing the script and outputting the file constant, except I will spell it right. If I reload the page now, you see we get this home www tutorials template system core init .php file, even though we are on the index page. What the file constant does is always point and um, well, the file constant is always equal to the path of the scripts that you use it in. For example, if I use the file constant here, it would have index.php at the end. If I use it here, it has a nit. If I used it here in this news page, it would have news.page.ink.php. It's the full path to the script that you write it in, basically, regardless if it's included. Um, there is also the uh, server array, which has the PHP file name variable, um, although that will not follow includes. So say if I use that here, um, it would show the path, uh, the full path to the index page, not to the init.ink.php page. Okay, so that's that. Um, and what we're going to do with this constant is get the directory part of it, because if I just go back to here, uh, we don't want this on the end, we just want the folder, which is this portion. Uh, luckily PHP has another function for that, which is the dir name function. It just returns the directory part of the function. So we're just going to create this new variable called core path. I'm going to make that equal to dir name of the file constant. If I just kill the script again now uh, and output this core path variable, like so, uh, and reload our page. Uh, whoops, reload our page. You see, we get the same thing as before, but without the file name on the end. 
So that's that. Uh, and what we're going to do now is use that to scan the core path slash pages. And what that will do is return an array of files that are in the pages folder, as I previously mentioned. So what I can do is just output that underscore r, oops, pages, and then kill the script there because we don't want to see our layout messed up underneath it. We'll just hit reload. You see, we get this array. Um, the reason we see the dot and the dot dot is because that is the output. Um, well, it's just the output. That's what it does. Um, these are always the first two elements in the array. Um, so from two onwards are the files that are in the folder. Um, the, the single dot just means the current folder, and the double dot just means upper folder. It's just the way it works, <laughs> basically. Um, so we're going to remove these in a moment. Um, and then we need to convert these file names into page names. Basically, we need to remove this bit here. Okay, so let's do that. Um, the way we're going to uh, remove the dot and the double dot is just to unset using the unset function. Oh, basically, what the unset function does is remove a variable from the remove a variable. Basically, so if I you uh, if I did unset core path and then tried to output core path here, we'd get an undefined variable message. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, unset pages zero and Oops, pages one, although without typos. If I now reload our page, you see that we start from two and zero and one have gone. So that's that fixed. Um, so the next thing we need to do is sort of loop over this array and remove the dot page dot ink dot php portion. Um, and the way we're going to do that is using a for each loop. So we can do for each. I have a video on these as well if you I don't know what I'm doing. Um, for each pages as page, no page like so. Oops. Uh, and what this does is, um, for each sort of element in the array, it defines page as that element by reference. What by reference means is that we can we can edit page directly. So if I just say page equals test, reload a page. You see both elements in the array are now equal to test. Obviously, we don't want that. I was just demonstrating what by reference means. What we do want to set them equal to is substring oops, of page starting from zero, and uh, the number of characters one is all of them up to the first uh, period dot, um, and we get the location of the first period using the string position function strpos, um, which takes two parameters. Um, page, <laughs> um, and then the character you're searching for, like so. So now if I reload our page, you see we get home and news, the two pages. Uh, I suppose I should briefly explain what's going on here. Um, I'm aware I'm getting quite short on time, but never mind. Uh, substring function returns a portion of a string, it takes three parameters, the first one is the string, second one is the starting position, and the final one is the length of the string. Um, I think, yeah, length of the string. Um, the string position function returns the number of characters in to the string. So in this case we're giving it two parameters, the first one is the string, and the second one is the character we're searching for. So this will, this will return four, um, so what we're actually calling here is that, which if you look at php.net will work basically. Now I'm going to remove this print underscore r and that. Okay, what we need to do now is define a variable that uh, tells our other page which file we're going to include. And we're going to do that basically by quickly checking if the get variable that's supplied is in the pages array. Um, so we're going to check that using the in array function, like so. This function, whoops. Uh, takes two parameters. The first one is what you're looking for, so get page, and the second one is the array, which is pages. And if the page is found, we want to define um, we want to define like a variable which is the file we're going to include. And if it's not not found in the pages array, we want to define a default value. Um, so in this case, it'll be the home page, which we'll do in the next video. 
Uh, so thanks for watching and join me for the next part.